Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at Prosper Tomebound, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, a 4-mana, 1-4 legendary tiefling warlock with a death touch, saying at the beginning of your end step, exile the top card of your library, and until the end of your next turn you may play that card. And whenever we play a card from exile, can be with the first ability or any other ability, we get to create a treasure token. So Prosper provides card advantage and provides a nice mana advantage as well. And our deck is kind of a control deck with a ton of removal, as you can see here from this huge pile. Couple sweepers, then we'll go over every individual pile here, but then we also have a ton of exile synergies, cards that let us play cards from exile to generate more treasure, and other treasure synergies in general. So let me guide you through it here, starting out with our mana accelerants. We've got Dark Ritual to potentially set up turn 2 Prosper, then our various 2 mana ramp artifacts to set up turn 3 Prosper. And then a Chandra, another powerful 4-drop that can also generate mana besides lots of other utility like dealing for damage or exiling cards with the plus 1 ability, which can also synergize with Prosper. And then Key to the Archive, just an individually powerful card that can also help us ramp and maybe find one of the powerful cards from its spellbook. Then the next category is removal, which is what most of the deck is about, since we want to control the game, slow it down, so we can really benefit from all the extra card advantage and mana advantage that Prosper provides. So at one mana we've got Blood Chief's Thirst, Fatal Push, Lightning Bolt, Strangle and Voltage Surge, which can sacrifice a treasure to deal 4 at instant speed. We've got Feed the Swarm as an answer to enchantments as well, which is pretty rare in Red Black. Heartless Act and Infernal Grasp as more instant speed spot removal in black. Then Electrostatic Blast from Alchemy is also quite synergistic with Prosper, as we can potentially play a card from Exile to get an extra treasure token. Molten Impact dealing for damage, just a very efficient removal spell. And then Soul Shatter can make the opponent sacrifice a third biggest creature or planeswalker. Murderous Rider and Bone Crusher Giant as adventure creatures also synergize with Prosper, as we can potentially play the creature from Exile, which will generate a treasure token in the process. And the same applies to cards with Foretell, so we can Foretell Demon Bolt for 2 mana and then cast it for single rent from Exile, which will also generate a treasure token. Bedevil, another all-purpose removal spell, could also be put in our pile that deals with artifacts, as we'll see in a second. We've got Glorybringer, which can come down Exert, dealing 4 to a non-dragon. Goblin Dark Dwellers can come down and replay a spell with mana value 3 or less from our graveyard without paying its mana cost, so it can often replay a removal spell. And then Cuts can deal 4 damage to a creature, and Ribbon out of the graveyard can be another nice finisher thanks to Aftermath. Then the next category is removal spells that can also hit artifacts. A braid dealing 3 to a creature or destroys an artifact. We've got Shield Breaker as another adventure creature that can blow up an artifact and then we can play it from exile making a treasure token. You find some prisoners can destroy an artifact or let us exile the top 3 cards from an opponent's library that we can play until end of turn also making a treasure. We've got Angrath's Rampage to either hit an artifact creature or planeswalker. Colligan's Command has a ton of options including dealing with artifacts. Making the opponent discard can also so deal some damage or bring back a creature from our graveyard and then Bedevil deals with artifacts, creatures or planeswalkers at instant speed. We've got a couple sweepers including Crush the Weak as another card with Fortal. Sweltering Suns can always be cycled if we don't need it. Extinction Event and the Meat Hook Massacre now with the Alchemy nerf no longer gaining life but still powerful enough to include. Then the next category is Discard Spells where we have Duress, Thoughtseize and Croxa, which can be escaped out of our graveyard. And then we get to the fun category, which are the Exile Synergy cards, including Valky, which we usually want to play as Tybalt at 7 mana, which can cast a whole bunch of cards from Exile, making more treasure tokens in the process. We've got Magmatic Channeler, can discard a card to exile the top 2 and play one of them. We've got a Rahilda, which lets us exile cards from the opponent's deck if we can connect with it, and thanks to all our removal we can usually clear a path for it. We've got Reckless Impulse, exiling the top two cards of our library, and until the end of our next turn we may play both of those cards. Robber of the Rich lets us exile cards from the opponent's library that we can play. Burgi we can play as Horde of Bounty at 5 mana, which lets us discard a card to exile the top two of our library, and we may play those this turn. We've got a Breos Apprentice, which can tap and sacrifice a treasure token for instance, any artifact will do, and then we can exile the top card of our library, and until the end of our next turn we may play that card, so that also includes a 
planes, so more ways to make treasure with Prosper. Then a bank job, a 3 mana enchantment, saying at the beginning of our upkeep, exile the bottom creature card of our library, we may cast that card this turn, and at the beginning of the next end step, if that card is still exiled, put it into our graveyard and create a treasure token. So pretty interesting card draw engine that can find more creatures, and if we don't play the creature we can still generate quite a few treasure tokens in the process. Then Florian lets us play cards from exile if we can damage the opponent. We've got Gonti as another way to play cards from the opponent's deck out of exile. And then Ourobrask will also exile cards from our library that we can then play in addition to our draw step while punishing the opponent, forcing them to play their cards from exile, otherwise they lose their draw step. And then a tally Primal Storm lets us play cards off the top of both players' libraries for free from exile if it attacks, so another great synergy with Prosper. And then we get to some of our treasure synergies, including Kalein, which can potentially put plus one counters on the creatures we play if we used treasures to cast them. We've got Professional Facebreaker, which can generate more treasure if we hit the opponent, and then we can sacrifice a treasure at any point to exile the top card of our library and play that card this turn. So incredibly synergistic with Prosper as well. Zorn will double our treasure production. We've got Mayhem Devil, so that every time we sacrifice a treasure or any card, we can deal one damage to any target. We've got Goldspan Dragon, of course, as a way to generate a ton of extra mana with all those treasures we generate. And then a Marionette Master, one of my favorite finishers. If it enters with 3 plus 1 counters from Fabricate and we sacrifice a treasure token, we can now drain the opponent for 4. So if we have a few treasure tokens laying around, we can one-hit KO the opponent. And then at the final category is additional card draw engines that don't necessarily synergize with Exile, including the Black Market Connections, which can also make more treasure tokens. We've got the classic Phyrexian Arena, and then a Fable of the Mirror Breaker, and eventually Soren the Mirthless, which can also draw a ton of extra cards. And then a mana base is pretty straightforward, lots of dual lands, a few utility lands including Castle as another card draw engine, we've got a few creature lands with Hive and Den of the Bugbear, since we're pretty light on creatures otherwise, so they can actually help us close out games, and then a few of the channel lands with Abandoned Mire and the Crucible of Defiance. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, facing Tasha, the alchemy version and our hand is promising with a turn 1 Thoughtseize, Mindstone, turn 3 Prosper. And uh, yeah, sometimes I'm okay waiting on Thoughtseize, but we get to curve out nicely, so I wanna potentially take away any interaction they have. And yeah, opponent's got two different 3 mana counter spells and never to return. So if we take their removal, then we might be able to resolve Prosper before they keep up a counter spell, so I think that's the plan. Turn to Mindstone, turn 3 Prosper, and yeah, as the name implies, hopefully Prosper. They've got one unknown in hand, they're gonna cycle, neutralize, and find Command Tower. Okay, so hopefully we get to untap with our commander, and then... Could play Zorn first, then play Command Tower to get double treasure. If they counter Zorn, so be it. And then we can still play Kroxa, which I don't want to get exiled by Dissipate. Playing Guardian Idol also reasonable, although we're not really ramping into anything at the moment, so... This seems fine. And get in for one. So for now we're going to keep hitting our land drops, and then we wouldn't mind finding some other creatures to keep up the pressure. Opponent does have the return to exile Kroxa, I guess that does work. But uh, yeah, we'll keep on hitting our land drops, making treasure. Could cut the zombie if we'd like, still have Heartless Act as removal, and this doesn't hit Planeswalkers. So yeah, that seems reasonable. And then now they don't have a way to exile our Aftermath card, so we can maybe set up a big Ribbons to drain the opponent. Could also sacrifice Mindstone just to draw, since we have plenty of mana now. Bedevil is the perfect answer to their Planeswalker, so they probably won't be playing that anytime soon.
All right, never mind, Tasha. May the best mage win. Ken plus or minus. It's gonna plus. So I won't be attacking with Prosper here. And then I could Bedevil now, but that would use all my treasures, so we'll just untap. And then Bedevil Tasha. Make a treasure. And hit with... I guess attacking with Guardian Idol also not too exciting. Since it would get a minus one counter. Could play a Meat Hook Massacre just so we have it in play to start draining the opponents, but don't expect too many of my creatures to die, so I'm okay passing. And then maybe I should just sacrifice Mindstone at this point. But we'll see what we exile a braid can deal with an artifact. So yeah, for now, just setting up a big ribbons, but our opponent's still at 20, so it's gonna take a while. Their skills prosper, although we can easily replay it. And the hive, we can also kill at instant speed. So play prosper, and then probably want to attack with our guardian idol as well. If we really wanted to, we could have cast a braid on Prosper just to make a treasure. Probably better off attacking for two. There's Stasha once again. Gonna plus. So does protect herself nicely. And yeah, we've got a ton of creature removal, but gonna struggle to deal with their planeswalker. So how much mana are we working with here? Five, eight, nine, ten. Plus four, so we can uh, ribbons for 12, which is quite a lot. Or do we wait? Although now our opponent's tapped out, so it might be a good opportunity to go for it. Currently no creatures to speak of, so Tasha's just plussing until she's gonna minus six. I think ribbons for 12 is fine, even though it's not quite lethal. Lane. We'll make two treasure essentially. And Eldest Reborn hits Prosper. Okay. Goldspan's excellence. So it can play Kalane followed by Goldspan Dragon, so it enters with an extra counter. And then, at this point, probably just go face. So, use our treasure to cast Goldspan. Opponent has the sword coming, sadly. Okay. So do I still want to animate Guardian Idol? To hit for one, we'll get a minus one counter from Tasha. Or we can also hit their Planeswalkers so they won't be able to ultimate. Yeah, that's probably better. So, animate Guardian Idol. And then we'll have to discard. At this point, probably go for Infernal Grasp. Tasha keeps plussing. They could animate one of their creature lands, although they're more likely to draw with Castle. Okay, so I guess replaying Prosper is what we're doing here. And then no point in attacking. We can sacrifice Mindstone to enable Revolt on Fatal Push. Mm, 
Eldest Reborn gets back Goldspain, which we can Heartless Act. So the game continues. Tasha gonna plus. So not quite ready to ultimate. And a last reckoning to wipe the board. That's too bad. I guess we can fatal push just to get a treasure. And we've got our own castle now. So decision time, activate castle versus replay Prosper, since we can do both. Playing Prosper might still be slightly better. Bone's gonna wash away, okay. Well, that's too bad. Now it costs 12 mana. And I'm sure opponent's ready to ultimate now. Although Meat Hook Massacre can wipe the board once they get a bunch of creatures in play. Nothing too exciting here. No immediate enter the battlefield abilities. Hive is animated. And hits us for three. Okay, Chandra can start pressuring the opponents. Although, I guess now Hive is the main concern. So step one, Massacre for three. And then now I can animate Guardian Idol to attack Tasha, as they didn't. Plus one, so we can finish her off. And then... I guess we can Chandra to add mana to activate Guardian Idol if we'd like. Or we can just uh, tap Mindstone and this can start dealing damage. Angrass Rampage also cleans up Tasha, but better off just dealing two to them, I think, and activating Guardian Idol. Or we could go face, put them to two, and then Chandra can finish them off next turn, although we still have that line available. And if Guardian Idol dies with Meat Hook Massacre in play, if they were to replay Tasha and Plus, then uh, they would also still die to the one damage plus two from Chandra. Okay, so yeah, step one plus. Yep, you're going down. Opponent's at one. Activate Guardian Idol. And yeah, opponent knows that they're dead. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play facing Chandra, Acolyte of Flame. Our hand is quite decent. Turn two Mindstone, always exciting. Setting up turn three Prosper. Well, their opponent could have some 4 damage burn spells, similar to Molten Impact, to deal with our commander right away. And then, um, yeah, we have answers to Chandra in the form of our burn spells. As soon as we make a treasure, we can cast Sorin. But let's get Prosper going. Burgi, if we can cast the Horn of Bounty, also very synergistic with our commander. And now Angras Rampage, another clean solution to their Planeswalker. It's gonna be a Sarkon Fireblood instead. Okay, so there may be some dragon synergies. And professional phase breaker the draw. Okay, so I can play Burgi since we don't have the mana for. Horn of Bounty, sadly, but still make use of that card from Exile, and then with a treasure we could still cast an Angrath's Rampage or Molten Impact if we'd like, 
I guess Molten Impact is probably a better use now, since Rampage is a bit more flexible. But both are fine. And hit for one. Okay, Fatal Push. We can always cast on our own creature if we don't have Revolt enabled, just to make a treasure to maybe save it for next turn. I'm going with a Seasoned Pyromancer, so maybe more of a discard theme. Although in red, there's not too many reanimation effects, so I'm not sure to what end they are currently discarding. Okay, so now Fatal Push can hit one of the tokens. Although, interestingly, what we can do, kind of the high-level play here, I guess, is cast Fatal Push targeting Seasoned Pyromancer. Revolt's not enabled yet, but we'll get a treasure, and then we can sacrifice that treasure before Fatal Push resolves. And we'll make another black mana. So now Revolt's enabled to kill Pyromancer. Opponent agrees. And uh, Florian would be a nice one to get down. So let's try that. Attack with both creatures. Before playing our land in case we find one of Florian. And then I could also use Electrostatic Blast if I'd like. Or play Face Breaker, so we do have quite a few options here. Opponent takes it. And we find a lot of great options. I uh, could cast Crush the Weak, which is a nice one-sided sweeper. And then just play it then. And get an extra treasure from Prosper, so the synergies keep on working here. Okay. Exile Mountain, pass a turn. Opponent could have their own sweepers now. But still have a lot of ways to get back on the board. Dwarven Mine making a dwarf. And Weather Lights. Okay, can make them sacrifice an artifact, for instance. Step one might be to attack and see what we find of Florian. Although playing the Phase Breaker first also. Reasonable, just want to potentially keep some leftovers in case of a board wipe. Okay, fine. Goldspan Dragon and Lightning Bolts. Those are both quite exciting. So, yeah, I guess we'll go for Goldspan here. And then play Goldspan Dragon. And then we can still Rampage, making them sacrifice an artifact. Could also get Sorin down, thanks to the extra treasure mana. Just gotta watch out for some sweepers that also hit Planeswalkers, but yeah, I guess getting an extra Planeswalker down is fun. Can draw a card, find some prisoners, can hit a card from the opponent, potentially. Although may not have the mana to cast it. Yeah, I guess it's probably still okay. Non-combat damage, do have an electrostatic blast which can discount it, but not enough to necessarily reap the rewards. This is gonna go to waste. I guess we'll pass then. Keep Phase Breaker in hand. Still have Blast available, just in case. But yeah, that's too much value for the opponent to overcome. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Vivian Monsters Advocate, so green creature deck and our hands, pretty decent. Got some creature removal, and then gonna try and wait to play Horn of Bounty at 5. 
So we can go for an apprentice on three, perhaps. And uh, yeah, hopefully Monogreen is not going to pack too many answers to our commander. Key to the archive also, pretty exciting. Carrioted, we won't be able to kill at instant speed here. Fatal push a turn late to the party. So, yeah, I think we just go for Apprentice here. And then next turn, hopefully pick up a land. Can maybe use the Apprentice to hit our land drop if we miss. Oracle, also something we want to take out as soon as possible. So may not have time to play Prosper here. Although, let's see, if we play Prosper and then activate Apprentice... Yeah, I guess we don't get to make a treasure token right away. Otherwise, by sacking the Thopter, we enable Revolt on Fatal Push to kill Oracle. So, instead, what's our plan? Could just feed the Swarm Oracle of Moldaya. It's going to be a great hench coming up. Also, kind of an issue. But keeping a kicked Thirst can deal with Vivian, at least. So it's a tough spot. I think... Could also ignore Oracle for a turn, just to develop our mana with Key, which is also not unreasonable. And hope they don't go off too much with Oracle. And then, what do we find? Demonic Tutor, or Putrefy as an answer to Great Henge, might be more important. Since I'm not even sure what to find with Tutor, and what to get rid of is another interesting question. Do we see ourselves using Burgi anytime soon? Fatal push a 1 mana answer to carry it, it. if we enable revolt, can deal with oracle for 1 mana. Hmm, I think we get rid of feed the swarm. Keep thirst as an answer to Vivian, so yeah, pretty complicated turn here. Keep apprentice back to protect her life total. Opponent has a Nylea on top, so at least oracle's not going off too hard. And a scavenging ooze. Okay. So now the Circle of Dreams Druid is something we might want to take out, and Electrostatic Bolt, a nice answer. So maybe I should start by activating Apprentice, see what we find in Exile, and then hope it's a land, so we can get a treasure right away with Prosper. And this also enables Revolt for Fatal Push. Channeler. So if I play Prosper, play Channeler... I'll still have the mana to cast Fatal Push, so I guess we'll try that. And then I have to push the Circle of Dreams Druid, I think, over Oracle. And now we've got some nice engines going with Prosper, can use the Apprentice to sacrifice our treasures as well to exile more stuff. A Braid can cleanly deal with Oracle. Foreign Clex coming up. And a Masked Vandal can go after our Key to the Archive. That's too bad. Really need that extra mana. Okay, so time to kill some stuff. I could... A Braid Oracle, we could Electrostatic Blast the Caryatid, could also Fatal Push while we're at it, so uh, quite a few options. Do I want to activate Channeler is a question. Now that we lost our uh, key, it's going to be a little bit harder to Putrefy, although we can still rely on our treasures to cast it. So that would be an answer to Vorinclex at instant speed as well. So there's a lot going on. I guess we can blast the Oracle here, then a Braid, dealing three to carry it, and see what we hit off Blast, maybe just a land. Okay, and that'll make another treasure. And then can keep a Putrefy. Channeler, probably fine to attack. And pass a turn. Finding Kalein. So yeah, our opponent was unable to play Vivian, and now 
all our exile engines are starting to take over. But our opponent does have some scary cards in hand, so if they can get those down, the game could still easily get out of hand. Augur of Autumn animates Nylea and a Tenacious Pup. Do we want to putrefy Augur of Autumn before they can play more things for free here? I think so. Even though that's our answer to Great Henge. Because we wanted to deny them the extra lands on top of their deck. Okay, now probably want to play Kalein. Could also think about playing Horn. Although, might just end up using the Apprentice here. Can sacrifice a token. And then play a land, make a treasure, and then we could still play Horn of Bounty. Didn't think I need to thirst anything. Could also use Channeler instead, although Horn's kind of a better version. And then probably wouldn't be using the Horn just yet since we're mostly tapped out. And yeah, opponent explodes. Horn just gonna take over providing a ton of card advantage and extra treasures in the process, and Mono Green just doesn't have much in the way of interaction, but of course does present some big threats. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Angrath the Flame Chained, and we've got a decent hand. Now the Channeler does not line up great against their commander, but let's have a look with the rest to see what else they're working with. Okay, so Undercity Plunder... Make us discard, Fatal Push as removal, a Rampage, and a Liliana, which is going to be a pretty big problem later in the game. So, yeah, I think we probably go for Liliana, or we can take Rampage to try and keep Prosper in play for a little bit longer, but Liliana is going to be a pretty big problem later. So, yeah, don't have a great plan to deal with Angrath either. I guess Voltage Surge can maybe deal a bit of damage to it. For now, do I want to play Channeler? I guess if it baits out an Angrath's Rampage, I'll be happy, but it's probably going to get pushed. That's going to be an Inquisition instead. Can take Voltage Surge. And then Fatal Push deals with Channeler. Massacre is not all that useful either. Now at least playing Prosper, if they don't remove it at instant speed, will exile a card. So it provides a little bit of card advantage. Plunder gets Fatal Push. And then we'll decline. Alright, let's go for Prosper. So next turn we can play Dark Dwellers, which can replay Duress. Opponent going for an Arcane Signet that they got off Plunder, and Acquisition Expert gets Massacre. Alright, that's not too bad. So we get to untap with Prosper, and Dark Dwellers can snipe that Angrath's Rampage. And then Angrath doesn't steal and sacrifice any of our two creatures. So let's duress. Lightning bolts to kill their own acquisition experts and our opponent packs it in. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing the mirror match. And yeah, we've got a good hand for the mirror match, potentially with turn 2 Mindstone, hopefully turn 3 Prosper, and then uh, Demon Bolts, also a clean solution to their commander early on. So we can take a look at how the opponent approached their deck, and can always get some inspiration, of course. Okay, no land to play Prosper right now. 
Although we could try and find one with you find some prisoners to just hit our land drop and then we can still foretell Demon Bolt. Since I would really like to hit my land drop here. And we did. Put on going for Revel and Riches as an alternate win condition. Not quite going that deep myself. But now if we draw land we can potentially play Prosper. And play one mana Demon Bolt to make a treasure. Which is quite efficient. Opponent's got Burgi. And did not find the land. So if we play Prosper, it's going to be susceptible to removal. So I think I prefer going Cold Steel Hearts plus a Braid. And then we can set up that play next turn. And hopefully the opponent will have played their own Prosper in the meantime. All right, perfect. One finds Crux of Fate, which can reset the board. All right, I guess it's still fine to make them play it. Uh, this is a dinosaur, not a dragon. But yeah, either way, I think going Prosper plus Demon Bolt is fine. And then we kind of force them to take a turn off casting Crux of Fate. We still get to exile an extra card. And then we can maybe follow up with Itali. And if they don't have a land, then of course we're in great shape. Opponent forced to take three, so probably their last untapped land left in hand. And there's the Crux of Fate. Okay. Well, hopefully Itali gets to stick around here since we don't have a whole lot else going on. And then we can play Prosper before attacking to get some more free treasure. It's going to be a Theater of Horrors. That one also quite synergistic with Prosper, but can take a while to get going. Get to untap. Okay. I guess we'll play our commander and then attack, hopefully revealing some exciting cards. Okay, we found Mystic's Mastery and Voltage Surge. So Voltage Surge can hit my own creature just to make a treasure, and Mystic's Mastery, I guess, can find some prisoners at the very least, or Lightning Strike the opponents. I guess we'll go for uh, prisoners here, over three damage, and then I'll target Itali. Just so we can uh, generate an extra treasure. And found the opponent's Itali and the Bedevil. Didn't think we have quite the mana to play Itali here. So that's too bad. But uh, I guess we'll grab a mountain. Opponents down to 16, play Mountain from Exile, make a treasure. And then probably okay to play our Guardian Idol. Might end up cycling Sweltering Suns. And a Black Market Connections is perfect. We're ahead on board so we can easily afford to pay some life to draw extra cards. So Theodore are going to damage us so they can play their land from exile. Do they have an answer for Itali? Because if they don't, they are in serious trouble. Alright, it looks like opponent throws in the towel, no answer to Itali. Next turn, play connections, make more treasure, exile more cards, and we should be on our way to victory. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, facing Minsk and Boo, and our hand seems acceptable. Turn one, Crossroads on black, and now a turn two, Guardian Idol makes our hands much better. And Soul Shatter seems like a fine answer to their Planeswalker, potentially. 
Kali, I'm gonna hit us for two. That's fine. Still gonna idle over Molten Impact and then hopefully Prosper can block. Spellbreakers, so yeah, opponents on a very aggressive Gruul deck. Now we might have to take a turn off killing their creature. Instead of playing Prosper, especially if they have some sort of fight effects. But it's still tempting to play our Death Touch creature. Now next turn we could play Goldspan and then Molten Impact afterwards, so that's a reason to Soul Shatter now and then maybe just play a Tapped Temple. And let's see here, this gives him Hexproof, but it doesn't help against Soul Shatter. So I guess we might as well let him untap. And do we want a Sorin? It's not bad. We'll keep it. And then maybe Soul Shatter can mess up their game plan for the turn. It's gonna be Toski. I think we actually make them sacrifice Toski here instead. Which is pretty difficult for a deck to deal with otherwise. So our opponent does still hit us for 6, but doesn't draw any cards. And then now, Goldspan into Molten Impact deals with a Spellbreaker. And then hopefully next turn we can finally play our commander. Opponents want no land away from attacking with a Faceless Haven, although it is the nerfed version, only 3 power. So they could play their commander now. Which is going to be Galleon attacking for two. And a Workshop War Chief. Okay. Electrostatic Bolt deals with Galia. I think that's better than making them discard with Croxa, although close call. So play Prosper. I guess we could still do both if we attack with Goldspan, which is probably the plan anyway. So. Hit for four, make a treasure. Make them discard. And then Electrostatic Blast can deal with Galia. Not sure if we should main phase it to play around a pump spell. Phoenix of Ash can be escaped. And then we can no longer blast it. But I guess they need one more card in Graveyard. So I guess we'll wait to kill Galia. So, the opponent cannot escape their Phoenix. Okay, then we go to Ramen Up Ruins, and finally time for Minsk and Boo. So it makes Boo a 1-1 one -one token with Trample and Haste. And then they're gonna try and pump it, so we'll blast in response. That works out. Can block Galia, Warchief can hit us for 5. That's probably okay to take. And then we can attack down Minsk and Boo with Goldspan Dragon, make another treasure, then play Dark Dwellers, replaying Soul Shatter, making them sacrifice Warchief, making more treasures in the process. And then we should be pretty far ahead, thanks to the extra mana from Goldspan. We should also be able to play Sorin here and completely take over. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing the Sentinel Worm Dragon's deck. And our hand is lacking some removal. Do have a Fable on 3. And then we can pull ahead with Horn of Bounty, potentially. But I really would prefer having more interaction for the matchup. So I think we take that free mulligan. This hand is missing red mana, and also doesn't really have much in the way of interaction. So, yeah, probably go to 6 here. Okay, this is better. Go to return to Guardian Idol. Didn't think Crush the Week will be necessary. But then, uh, yeah, turn 3 Prosper with Impulse to make a treasure provide more advantage. Although now, Rahilda might be worth playing first. And then we can make use of those extra cards. Maybe hit some land drops along the way. I think still getting Prosper out there next turn is going to be worth it. And 
and the young blue dragon gonna scry and draw. So our opponent's tapped out. Valky can also take a look to maybe snipe a dragon. Or we can wait until we play Tybalt. And a land in exile is ideal. Opponent passes. We'll get our treasure. And then we could have a look with Valky. If we'd like, maybe should attack first. And see what they're working with. Although it is close to just go for Tybalt, which we're close to next turn already. Yeah, I guess we can Impulse and then... Maybe hit a land with it. Could cast Sorin. Makes a replacement treasure. And it can draw. That's worth it. Just a little bit scared of playing Rahilda when they might have some instant speed removal. And then happy to reveal a land. Okay. Well, happy we mulligan since this hand is playing out quite nicely. Could see one of many dragons here. All their opponent needs to play around our extinction events if they play an oddly costed 5 mana dragon. Doesn't necessarily play out all that well. Step 1, draw with Sorin. Revealing a Dark Dwellers, that's okay. Can afford to pay a bit of life. And then what's next? Could extinction event a blue dragon, make a treasure, and then can still play Kalein here. And then next turn we definitely have the mana for Valky. And name odd. And we should be able to pay for the wards from uh, Sentinel Worm. So I'll decline to play Rahilda just to keep a bit more mana available. Terror of the Peaks is a scary one. Although dies to cut. And dies to Chandra as well. Although our opponent might have some hexproof tricks available to protect Terror of the Peaks. And our removal is sorcery speed. So I cannot necessarily get around that. So step one, probably plus with Sorin. See what we find. Gomti, is that worth for life? Sure. Next, we could have a look with Valky just to see if they have a protection spell. Although playing Tybalt is so much more exciting. Let's start with cuts, see if that works before we invest into playing Chandra. Okay, that worked. And then, I guess I'm liking Chandra, make mana, and we could play Rahilda, perhaps. Or we could just go for Tybalt, which also sounds pretty exciting. Now we are at 13, so I have to be a bit mindful of some hasty dragons. Veil of Summer. Okay, so that's what they had. Still gonna plus Tybalt's. And attack for two. Alright, so we've got three Planeswalkers in play. And we can ultimate our Sorin next turn. So things are looking good. And our opponent throws in the towel. GG's Prosper providing a ton of value. And yeah, our double mulligan certainly paid off here. So overall, quite pleased with how the deck turned out. Certainly a more controlling strategy, so if you're more into aggressive creature decks, this may not be the one for you. And also if we end up playing against opposing control decks, the games can easily drag out. We might end up with a handful of creature removal that doesn't necessarily line up in the matchup. But if you're playing against other creature decks, you're usually in for a good time. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.